Borrowing costs were the key driver of stocks today because costs surging again as the deficit continues to spiral higher. That hits stocks. Now, that said, this was just one day, and many indexes are still higher over the last few days. Of course, all this coming as the war in Israel intensifies, raising more questions around geopolitical stability and energy stocks. But even with all this going on, one big bank, little old Goldman Sachs, going long and strong. Their options team sees a 19% upside to the average S&P 500 stock over the next 12 months with biotech, one big potential standout. Take note of that. Pretty bullish call. But does everybody agree? And how might tomorrow set the tone and set the stage for your money ahead? Let's find out and bring in our opening panel, Wall Street Horizon VP of Research, Christine Short, and 248 Ventures Chief Strategist, Lindsay Bell. Both of you, thank you very much. Lindsay, start with you. Uh, what is your take on earnings season? I, I don't really like to talk about earnings that much, but me thinks this one may be a little more important, particularly with the banks and given that move in yields. Yeah, I mean, I think this earnings season is going to be really important. It's really the next catalyst for the market in general. It's going to tell us where the market can go from a fundamental perspective into the end of the year. Are we going to get that Santa Claus rally? So we're going to, of course, be watching J.P. Morgan tomorrow and the rest of the banks. J.P. Morgan is a bit of an outlier. They're a much more diversified, much bigger bank and much more capitalized bank versus all of the others. But they are so, because of that, they are a great bellwether for not only the banking industry, but also the economy. They have a great consumer banking business, as well as they do a lot of business with corporations and institutions. So we're going to hear a lot about all different parts of the economy from them, and it'll be yeah. the one to watch. I think thinking of banking earnings in general, they're pretty. They, the, the, the expectations are pretty low going into this reporting period. The stocks have, of course, been beaten up pretty substantially. So the bar is pretty low for the banks. They, yeah. they outperformed last quarter. I wouldn't be surprised to see them outperform this quarter. But again, it's going to be all about the rates, how it's impacting net interest margin, net interest income, delinquency rates, reserve rates, and of course, their fixed income portfolios. And also, of course, Jamie Dimon, CEO, or uh, JP Di almost Jamie Dimon, CEO. You know what he is? We're just going to call him that. We're just going to rename the company Jamie Dimon Chase. Why not? It seems appropriate. He says stuff. Christine, the, the expectation is for a slight decline in earnings, but you're a little more optimistic. I don't know that I'm, I, I'm more optimistic. We know going into every earnings season, the bar is always really low, right? Companies issue guidance. They sandbag, right? They give you a little bit lower guidance than they actually know they can hit. And then when companies report, they beat. Look, we've only had 20 companies from the S&P 500 report at this point. Something like 90% have beat, right? Mm. So that negative 0.3% growth rate that FactSet is expecting, we're going to beat that. We're going to end up in the green. Um, it is still right now the fourth consecutive negative growth rate that we've seen, but it's improving, right? But I think the dichotomy of this earnings season is we've got an improving growth rate, but the headwinds are so pervasive. You know, we've still got, we talked about those higher interest rates and how that's impacting all parts of the businesses. We're going to hear a lot about that from the banks tomorrow. You've got the consumer who has remained so resilient through High inflation, CPI almost hitting double digits, and now they're starting to wane right as we head into the biggest shopping yeah. season of the year. And that's a little bit concerning. And then, of course, on top of that, you now have geopolitical tensions with the Israel-Hamas war. And so I think there's going to be a lot to see here in guidance. We always talk about the you know, former earnings season, but that's backwards looking. So what yeah. we really want to look at, of course, is the guidance. And I just can't imagine the guidance is going to be great going into Q4, considering all that's going on. So, so, Christine, back to you to follow up on that. You talked about the consumer. I completely agree. And I know that we love talking about the banks here on C. Why is that? Because that's where the money is. But <laughs> I, I wonder, honestly, don't laugh, if Dollar General and Big Lots and Target's numbers are, and guidance are going to be more important to understanding the markets and the economy than J.P. Morgan. Does that make me crazy or no, I mean, the consumer 70% of GDP, right? And they've been holding this whole thing up for a while. And they're, you know, starting to show signs of them cracking. When we talked about credit card delinquencies, the 30 day plus, the highest they've been in 10 years. On top of that, you've got loan growth waning. So yes, the banks tomorrow, they'll talk about interest rate income. It's still quite good, but now it's impacting other mm -hmm. very important parts of their business. Deposits, the banks are having to give more to get people to deposit with them. Um, we know that U.S. consumer has spent most of their 
their um, st stimulus money. And so their savings are actually lower than they were pre-pandemic. So I think there's a lot of concerns for the consumer there here. And I think you're going to start to see them hold back.